Hey, what is up guys? And in today's video, we're going to be doing a Banggood window shopping. Well, not Banggood. We're just going to go window shopping on a couple slides. Just see what's new. And also the current update on the open hardware flight controller, which you can build and customize to your own needs and have it manufactured at JCLB. Now, I highly recommend this company because it's going to be our current sponsor. And this video was sponsored by JLC PCB for our future projects. Now, the reason why I chose them is for a couple reasons. One, is that the easy ADA software does belong to them and it'll make it a lot easier for everybody to order. For example, once you finish your flight controller, which will be, I'll have that full playlist for it. If you haven't watched my videos, I'll have a playlist on how to build and customize your own flight controller and have it manufactured as well as building it. Now, the reason why, again, I chose JLC PCB is because of the ease of use. Now, for example, here's the schematic for the flight controller. It's very simple. And with one click, you convert it to a PCB and then you arrange it to as you please, which I'll be showing you in a later video once it's complete. And once it's complete, all you have to do is export. And then that's it. There you go. There's your flight controller and you just purchase it with just one single button and you get 10 or 20 pieces or however many pieces you want for two bucks plus the shipping, depending on your location, the shipping prices can vary. And that is the reason why I decided to choose JLC, JLC PCB because it's going to make the whole thing easier. And with just one link, you have full access to all of my schematics, which I think are going to be good in the long run for everybody, especially for people who are just barely getting started into this. All right, let's move on. So Banggood window shopping. Let's go ahead and see what the hell's new. And we're probably going to check out the other couple sites. I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I really want to discuss a couple things with you and show you a couple things. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the way this works is I'll leave a link to everything as I go in the order that we're checking them out down below. If you could check those out, those greatly support the channel. So the FR Sky R9M. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you've probably been hating my post because every little bit, every little couple days or so, I find a new bundle that makes me go crazy i've actually purchased three bundles myself every time i see a bundle it just for some reason i'm just addicted like okay i don't want to just buy a single receiver i want this whole bundle here i haven't purchased this one but i'll show you the one that i purchased this one just released i guess right now it's with the micro and they're giving you the t antenna for the micro and they're giving you the t antenna for the uh r9m i'll leave a link to this down below 60 bucks it's crazy i mean i think it's going to be the standard soon on quadcopter because the lower the frequency the better that it travels and it penetrates kind of like a car moving with a really nice sound system in it you have the highs you know like the sound of perhaps people singing and you also have the lows like the bass and from far away you will never hear the sound of the person who is singing or the high-pitched noises of the instruments what you will hear is the bass because it's the lowest frequency and you see how the bass travels through walls like crazy and it just vibrates everything and that is why the r9m is doing so great and especially that fr sky have released it as such an insanely low price for everybody which is just remarkable and that was like i think one of the best moves that fr sky could ever make and we're probably going to see it drop in price a little bit later because the demand is so high on this all right so let's take a look at this this is the fox f722 dual gyro now have you probably seen this before or you probably think you've seen this before this is the exact flight controller from dal rc the f722 fox is a manufacturer it manufactures for both of them but i still haven't seen any reviewers review this as i remember correctly but it's basically the same thing and i have used the dal, dal rc f722 which i'll be having a full dedicated video just for that flight controller real world testing which i find to be absolutely spectacular now the f722 uh dal rc flight controller does have dual gyro and you can choose those through the cli command with one single command and everything is well documented so it's really nice in that perspective it's currently the third link down in the description if you want to go ahead and check it out so it's a really nice flight controller and i do recommend it hands down without a doubt okay now let's take a look at is it this one yeah this one here so maytech released a new flight controller now you might say okay well so what it's an f7 yes s7 se s special edition okay so what's the special edition well this thing is pretty crazy because it has maybe one new feature basically now it does have the dual gyros which is really nice if you take a closer look here it says c1 and c2 now you might say well what the hell is c1 and c2 c1 and c2 means camera one and camera two now some of you might say this is completely useless but some of you might say this might be pretty fun so you can actually install two cameras and set a switch in the beta flight to switch between the cameras and this is already programmed into beta flight currently for for, for this uh, flight control however i now the firmware i believe as i know a week ago that it was not finished so it'll probably be finished very soon now it does come with a barometer connected via I, uh, to uh, ic squared we have the osd connected via spi i don't know if it's usually connected by spi but i need to double check the source code i don't really remember 
Um, here we have both gyros connected by SPI and you can choose between them through the CLI as I believe or you have a drop down box now I think they've added into Betaflight so you can choose uh, which gyro oh, that was INAV I forgot but you will figure it out soon enough just go to Matex site and then you'll know and here's a link to it I'll have it it's the fourth link down if you want to go ahead and check it out so this thing is packed with a bunch of things it does come with low ESR capacitor however it doesn't have a 9 volt regulator on board so keep that in mind so you will be giving it uh, raw battery voltage but in return, what they have done here, which is really nice, uh, if you can tell here, a TVS diode. Matic is well known to always kind of think ahead or just be well prepared for such nasty voltage spikes. And this is what a TVS diode does. It basically blocks the or just limits the high voltage spikes, thus allowing your components to survive a lot longer in a crash or something of that nature. So whenever you're in a market for a flight controller, see if you could find that little TBS diet. Usually it's the closest to the battery pads. That's a really nice addition with your capacitor that you'll be adding. Just keep that as a side note. All right, let's go ahead and see what else we got here. So we're going to see more, yeah, the diatone. So diatone actually contacted me. I requested the 2.5 inch. I really want to test it, but I don't know if they're going to send it. So hopefully they do. And they've released a 2 inch 3S, a 2 inch 4S, a 2.5 4S, and a 3 inch 4S. So obviously the cheapest is the 2 inch 3S. And I really want to actually try this one. It's around 100 bucks. They're really well priced. And I think they're using the Mamba stacks. I'll have a link to all of them down below. You can go ahead and check those out. And again, that greatly supports the channel and enables my open hardware flight controller to keep moving. All right, let's go ahead and see what else we got. I think there was really nothing else here uh, that's really interesting. Oh, actually, no, this one is. So this one a while ago I posted on Facebook. Many of you probably seen it. I was thinking of doing some kind of a mod for the X-Lite to take full-fledged uh, modules here. Now, someone's already beat me to it, and I'm very happy because this is very properly well executed, hopefully from what it seems, and it just cut down time quite dramatically. Actually, it's not, but I mean, that's fine, whatever, as long as it works, and we'll see how well that works. So that's really nice in that perspective that they have made this, and I'll leave a link to it down below. I wish it was a little bit cheaper, but eight bucks is still pretty affordable. So that's really cool, but you will be needing the battery mod or the upgraded uh, end caps for this which allow you to put 18650s however once you do that then you won't fit in the case anymore and we'll see that as time goes on once i receive those now the emacs tiny hawk baby hawk so emacs has been writing every single reviewer and sending them the emacs tiny hawk now they've also wrote me and they said they sent me one i haven't received it so i don't know what's up with that so everyone here has received it from emacs so i'm very curious to see how well this actually does and uh, i'll be comparing it to something of whatever it is that it compares to here for example i think what i could compare it to is possibly next to the uh, t-motor version but that one has an f3 but we'll we'll see that in the days to come here so i'll have to link to this down below also all right let's just move on to something else now because I, i've gone through these a couple times already so let's go to radios and receivers actually because this, this is the interesting part i am really addicted to the r9m module and i do not know why so where is the receiver we're on it okay so let's go to the newest as you can tell here, wow, look, even more. I haven't seen these just yet. So we do have a bunch more bundles here. 63 bucks. You're getting, oh, we already saw this one. This is crazy. You're getting the full-fledged uh, version of the R9M, the full-fledged monster receiver with PWM outputs as well as SBUS out and SBUS in. And you're getting two IPEX. Oh, and actually, these are the MMCX, which connect to the receiver, the T antenna as well as you get the T antenna for the uh the R9M module as well for 90 bucks, which is a really, really great price. I'll leave a link to this down below here. And uh, let's go ahead and check out another one. Now, I did pick up one also. Let me show you which one. This one here. I saw this one yesterday or day before yesterday, and I just had to have it. I mean, uh, three micros with three antennas here, the T antennas, if you want to switch them out, and plus the big fat one antenna here. This antenna still will handle absolutely phenomenal. I don't think you'll you'll even need to upgrade, to be honest. I can I can hit four kilometers without a dropout with this antenna. However, I did pick up the T antenna, which is this one here, and uh, we'll be testing it very soon. So I'll leave a link to this down below. This is the one that I have gotten the other day, and I'm waiting for it to arrive still. So let's go down here and i think that's really it currently let's go to the open flight controller and just give you the current status here on it everything is basically done here 
All right, so let's jump to something else now. So let's take a look here and let's bring in the flight controller. All right, so let's take a look at the current status of the flight controller here. Now, currently what I've done is I've fixed up the gyro, the MPU 6000's pinout. I did have a couple of mistakes, which I have double checked and went over and fixed them. I've also added a different switch just to kind of make it a little bit easier to understand here. So this is the boot button. Basically, it's connected via 10K to ground. And then once you press the button that connects right there and then once that connects it gives it it makes the boot button to high then it'll know to enter dfu mode when you boot this guy so take that into consideration now if we take a look here i've changed this to 8 megahertz resonator instead of a 32 kilohertz uh crystal i don't know why i was using 32 kilohertz crystal at the time but yeah it's supposed to be an 8 megahertz uh, resonator as i believe and if i'm if i'm incorrect here please correct me um, um yeah that'll be a lot of help right here down here we just have the um, the power circuit. What's really needed, you know, the bypass capacitors here to keep the to get the microcontroller unit running. These are actually the pins that are on the microcontroller unit. You'll see that in the PCB. Once I get into the playlist, oh, this will all start making a lot of sense, and it's actually easier than you think here. And this is the 3.3 volt regulator. I use the NCP1117 because I found them on Mauser, and that's what I have in the shop, and it'll be just a little bit easier for me to start off with. And here we use this little diode. This is the diode, so you don't short circuit between the five. If you're applying five volts and you're in the boards. Uh, has some other sort of uh, five volts coming into the board where you don't fry it basically so it just picks one source to give to the uh 3.3 volt regulator which powers the microcontroller unit as well as the mpu 6000 gyro here and here what do we have here we have the five volt input this is the uh so pc5 what i figured out is this is the five volt usb so once pc5 pin pc5 or pin 25 on the f4 flight controller uh on the fury f4 firmware once it connects, once it reads voltage from the USB line here through a 10K resistor and another 10K that's connected to ground, this will give it voltage and it'll say, okay, hey, the, the USB has been connected. And that's, I guess that's how it'll know that uh, don't arm while it's on the bench, basically while you have your receiver and you have it connected to the PC. So this is something that's very important here. And uh, obviously this is still a beta and I haven't really done it yet. So I haven't built it yet. So uh, currently I'm going to have this uh, sent today to JLC, JLC PCB to have them manufacture the PCB. And I'm going to go ahead and start building it on the channel and we test our first prototype here. Now, here we just have a couple 22 ohm resistors for the USB standards. Now, some people are saying on D plus just keep the 22 ohm to keep the full speed. But what I'm actually seeing is that every flight control that I own has a 22 ohm resistor on the way on both D plus and D minus for some reason. So I'm sticking to the current standard that I see everywhere uh, around me, basically, which I've tested. And here are just the pins that goes to the gyro. We got the gyro CS. We have the gyro CS. This clock, the SDA, the SDO. And um, everything looking good here. And these are the LED statuses. We have LED1 and LED2. And obviously, they're connected here and they go there. If you missed my previous video, I, I went into more details into this here. Now, I, I believe I got the MPU6000 uh, gyro schematic correct here. But I will also do one last double check before sending this to be manufactured. And here's a, a preview of uh, the, the... Actually, I haven't even done it yet. But remember, I told you there was two resistors. Uh, on the usb input so they'll be right here basically these are the resistors that are on the way to the flight controller here which would be right here actually which are these that we just saw here the 22 ohm resistors these are what really uh, these are the send send the data between the usb and the flight controller when you're flashing it or programming it or anything of that nature here and again i'll get into this in a lot more detail in the upcoming days once i have the first prototype built now this is just a i'm just placing the things around now if you've noticed something different now when i've actually set this up you see the c16 v reg c17 v reg these are the capacitors anything with a c is a capacitor anything with the r is a resistor but i've also added the underscore uh we could say comment or note to know that this would be next to the voltage regulator so when i just start placing them i know that i'm going to put them in the correct area correct area g means gyro so these are the things that the gyro needs so i could put them close to each other the ones with nothing basically are what the microcontroller needs here the led you see resistor for led so i know these are the the resistors right here for the led and these are the leds right here if you take a look so the, the resistor obviously would go before and it'll pass limit the current to led and the led would turn on here's the boot button and the boot button does need a resistor so we have r1 boot so i'm trying to make it i'm trying to think and making it as simple as possible so when i do begin the series this will make a lot of sense but obviously in more advanced stuff this won't be there so here we have another one this r7 is also usb i don't know why i didn't write when i pushed it over 
remember this is the diode that blocks you know the 5 volt from uh, the, the, the the USB and the 5 volt from the external so you don't have a short circuit if you have two power sources going into the 3.3 volt regulator here which is providing power to the microcontroller unit and again this is the MPU 6000 gyro so yeah it'll be connected it, it's really nice it's really easy if you zoom in you can actually tell so this is a gyro sda and then gyro sda is right here and then just to route it you, all you have to do is here we just take a wire oh, we're on the wrong layer here it's kind of like a uh, photoshop if we use photoshop so there we go now this is not the proper way to route it kind of but i mean i'm just giving you an example right now there we go now we you have you just made your first ever trace on a pcb you know what i mean it's, it's going to be really nice especially for the people that have not done any of this stuff here so it's going to be pretty good and i also should be showing you how to do it on double sides here and um again this is not the final form i'm just you know getting an idea of how many things i'm needing and just checking the sizes of each uh what i'm going to use you know these are 0403 size these are and you, these will also more, make more sense as time goes on with the playlists so currently everything is going good now i am debating on adding the 5 volt regulator before proceeding with the manufacturing or i should keep it currently with the 5 volt regulator not installed and just have pinouts for every single pin on this board so we can take full advantage of every pin on this microcontroller unit unlike we see in most flight controllers but this is just um i'm still debating on what to do and hopefully today will be the day where i actually upload it to basically not even upload it i just finish it here and i just click one button which is this one i'll have to save it first and then i just have it basically done at jl jlc pcb and once you have my link you'll be able to do the exact same thing which is going to be really nice and all these will keep i'll keep them updated in public so everybody can come in and go ahead and purchase some of these projects or i mean you know just edit them and then purchase them like i am here so that is the idea and it's been a long actually 17 minutes i've been recording so that's actually quite a long time so i'm gonna let you guys go and i want to know what you guys think of everything let me know down in the comment section and um yeah I'll see you in the next one. Peace out, guys.